What an honor and privilege it is to be together again. This is so good. You know, Matthew 6, Jesus said this. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to seek first God's kingdom. So let's welcome precious Holy Spirit to help us. Precious Lord, we never want to take for granted the privilege we have of access to your presence. Help us. Help me and my friends, the brothers and sisters in Christ and those who are looking for truth. Lord, help us to find it. Lord, unfold it for us and help us to know the good plans that you have for us. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Oh, this is going to be good. Right now, we're beginning our new series called There's a Fire. There's a fire. And that's a good thing. You know, down through the ages, mankind has desperately needed and taken advantage of the phenomenon we call fire. It's warmed, fueled, protected, illuminated, and even cooked our steaks. Thank God for that. Everybody saying amen. Yes, we've also had some mishaps like burning down Chicago and London, but we won't talk about that right now. So is fire good? Is it bad? What does God's word say about fire? And what does God's word make fire out to be for you and me? How relevant is it? From Genesis to Revelation, fire is critical, even intrinsic to God and his word. Throughout scripture, fire is both good and destructive, but it all depends on who you are, what you are, and where you stand, the context. So, who is this series for? This is for you. If you've been looking for that energizing fire in your life, if you've been looking for the ignition and blasting power to your dreams, this is for you. This is for you if you've been looking for the protection that you so desperately need from your enemies. And this is for all the discouraged, disheartened children of God that need the true comfort of God's fire, the healing power, the revealing power of God's fire. If you lack courage, boldness, and light, there's a fire, God's fire. I'm hoping you're hearing my tone that this is a good thing. You know, God spoke to Moses out of the fire. A pillar of fire led the children of Israel at night, giving them true direction and illumination. Friends of Daniel, you might have heard of them, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were thrown into the fiery furnace. It seemed bad, but because the king chose to kill them for not worshiping him, but they relied on God. And in the fire, did you know that their ropes of bondage were burned off? Did you know that in the fire, the Son of God was revealed to them? That the king ended up promoting them and their true God. That's good news. And they got true hero status all because of the fire. That was supposed to be a bad thing to them, but it was good for God's children. Do you see the context? Even fiery trials can work for you. It's not either or. Think about this. A plane is meant for good, but it becomes evil in the hands of a terrorist who hates people. A car that mobilizes a family and gets them here and there, it becomes a drunk driver's killing machine. The Bible talks about strange and unholy fire also. In Leviticus 10, you can find that. Some whiskey makers, they claim that their alcohol has fire in it. Is that strange? Well, you tell me, you tell me, God puts marriages together. How many marriages have you known whiskey to save? You just tell me that. Fire is essential to life, my friend, both natural and supernatural. And we want the authentic, don't we? Not strange fire. We want the authentic. Turn with me to Matthew 3, verse 11. This is John the Baptist talking to a crowd. And here's what he said. He said, Jesus will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Oh, my friend, the Greek word for baptize here basically means to submerge and fill like saturating a sponge. Jesus, John the Baptist says, he prophesies, will baptize you, will fill you to saturation and overflowing with Holy Spirit and fire. It's a good thing. A little boy named Oscar, he was asked by his mom, Oscar, where are, what are your shoes doing here in the living room? And he looked down at the shoes, kind of confused, and he said, well, mom, they're, they're not doing nothing. Mom didn't like that answer, and she got a sterner tone. She goes, what do you mean, Oscar, nothing? 
he quickly, he fixed the misunderstanding. He said, Mom, he said, shoes can't move without feet in them. He helped her understand that. My friend, let me tell you something. Our lives do not move or work right without Jesus, Jesus filling us with His Holy Spirit and fire. Let me say that again. Our lives don't move or work right without Jesus filling us and empowering us with His Holy Spirit and fire. You're about to get lit up with the revelation of God's love. God is light. He's fire. Did you know that? We're about to discover the word fire is even built into the Hebrew word for blessing. Oh, that's going to come in about part three. But hold on. You're going to discover some good things about fire. The Hebrew word for fire is built into the identity of man, woman, and the presence of God. Wow. What should we expect Jesus to do for us as we download this revelation of Holy Spirit and fire, the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire? Because you see, Jesus' baptism of Holy Spirit and fire, spoken of in Matthew 3, verse 11, it will do this, it will illuminate. It will eliminate. It will amalgamate. You know that? It will bring cohesion, transformation, bringing forth a vessel of spiritual alloy. Number four, it's going to detonate. Oh, some of you need to be detonated. Fire will ignite your dreams, create combustion that we so desperately need. It's going to agitate. Fire will excite, stir up, generate movement. It'll even bake the bread. And number six, fire is part of celebrate. You got to celebrate. Fire is going to lift you up. It's going to promote you. It's going to generate movement. Oh, isn't that beautiful? It'll draw others longing for life into your life, and it'll create an atmosphere. Fire is part of the celebration. Do you long for any of this? Are you tired of just being tired? Are you without fire in your life? Sadly, though, devils and tyrants have weaponized and perverted fire to destroy progress in life. Maybe this is why there's been such a dark, superstitious view of fire with respect to God. If you happen to mention God and fire in the same sentence, right? Many people get this fearful hell perspective. They're going through their own personal hell on earth, terrified of going to hell in the afterlife. So they want to avoid the subject of God and fire. This is a great deception. This is a strategy of the enemy to keep you from the truth. David Bowie, the great performer, the, the late great artist, he said this, he said, religion is for people who fear hell. Spirituality is for people who've been there. You know what? In one respect, he was kind of right. Many are motivated and controlled by hell in one way or another. But sadly, his statement only acknowledges two broken options. But I've got good news for you. God the Father sent Jesus, His Son, to give us life, not hell, but the power and energy of love, light, and life. And that's from God's fire. And it's glorious. You want all of it. My friend, there is a fire. Some get turned off of God because of a lie that says God's agenda is hellfire. Well, that's a lie. Mark Twain said this. He said, it's easier to fool people than to convince them they've been fooled. Satan strategizes. He strategizes to deceive humanity into thinking that any talk of God plus fire equals hell. He's terrified of you discovering the truth, my friend, because knowing the truth not only sets you free, as Jesus said in John 8, verse 32, but it also activates, it ignites, it fires up the revelation of truth that you want. Bless his heart, Gandhi once said, he said, I like your Christ. I do not like your Christians. Your Christians are so unlike your Christ. A Christian without fire will always misrepresent Christ. Sadly, it's not an uncommon thing. We're about to discover in God's character that he is a fire, a consuming fire. You already know that God is love, God is light, but this fire attribute is ultimately necessary for us to lay hold of because it's the aspect of God's true character that gives us access to His illumination, His elimination, God's amalgamation, detonation, agitation, 
and God's celebration. Now, when I said agitation, were you thinking, oh, great. Yes, yeah, see, I, I knew we're going to get all religiously terrorized here. No, no, no. Come on. Don't go off track here on me. It's God's desire and his goal to agitate and terrorize, guess who? The demonic wolves that will come after you. Isn't that good news? Isn't that comforting? You need a fire in this world of predators. In fact, Jesus called out all predatory religious leaders as snakes, vipers, and wolves. Did you know that? And if you can't tell the difference between a wolf and a lamb, my friend, you need some fire to illuminate the situation. Franklin D. Roosevelt said this. He said, I ask you to judge me by the enemies I have made. Good thought. Good statement. When you're surrounded by hungry wolves, there's nothing better than a big old bonfire with marshmallows to put a smile on your face and push you at ease. This fire, this fire of God protects and it directs you. Oh, that's a good thing. I hope I'm stirring up a hunger in your heart for the fire of God. So let's investigate God's blessings regarding the fire that He has for us, for you and me. Now remember this, God has a habit. He's got a way that He always follows and that is He lets you choose. You're made in His image, but He's given you free will to make choices. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, God says, I've set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, but you choose. God doesn't force His love, His light or His life on you. You get to choose. In fact, you must make a choice. But the devil knows this, you see. So this is why he works overtime to deceive you into not choosing right. And let's be honest, folks. Many people make choices in life that they ultimately regret, that they don't want. Many people at the end of their life regret choosing what they thought they wanted. I once saw a sign that said, Well, hello there. You look like a bad decision. Come on over here. <laughs> Another sign said, bad decisions make good stories. But my friend, you don't want to be the star of that story. You don't want to be the hero of that story. No, no. Choose wisely. Choose God's plan for your life. Jesus comes with a gift from Father God. It's his baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. And he paid full price for it at the cross. Jesus shed his blood so you and I could have this amazing, priceless gift, the first fruits of our inheritance. Let me read again to you the full version of Matthew 3, verse 11. John the Baptist is talking to the crowd, and he says this. He said, I indeed baptize you in water because of repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy or fit to take off or carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The word translated into fire here from the Greek into the English is the Greek word pronounced poor, not P-O-O-R, but P-U-R, but it's pronounced poor. It means fire. It means the heat of the sun. Other translations are lightning, fiery challenges and trials. Throughout scripture, fire is often used figuratively, like with the fire of God, which transforms all it touches into illumination and into the likeness with himself. We see God in Exodus 3, that famous encounter between God and Moses, where God manifests as fire out of the burning bush. God also shows up an appearance of fire when he descends upon Mount Sinai in Exodus 19, verse 18. Then fast forward to 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 7. Jesus and his angels are revealed in a flame of fire. Well, remember Elijah. He got caught up in a chariot of fire. In Revelation 1 verse 14, Jesus' eyes are flashing like a flame of fire. Our risen Savior riding on the white horse. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that a beautiful picture? So that's a lot of fire. Fire everywhere. Genesis through Revelation. Is it good? Is it bad? Should the fire make us happy, sad, or does God want us to be afraid? Fire, so be really, a, be really afraid. Be scared. Look, let me remind you of this. God is love. Isn't that what 1 John 4 verse 8 says? 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. 
Jesus was constantly showing up in situations with his disciples and he would constantly be having to put their hearts at rest and saying, fear not, I'm with you, fear not. That doesn't sound like one wanting to baptize you with destructive fire, is it? It sounds like somebody, the Lord himself, wanting to baptize you with an empowering fire, with a glorious blessing fire. Listen to John 8, verse 12. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd and he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light which is life. He's talking about the fire of God. He's talking about the fire that illuminates the path of God for us. You know, one of my favorite places to be, and it might be yours too, is sitting by a real fireplace, especially in cold weather. Pam and I, we have one of our favorite places we like to travel to. It's a, a hotel in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. They have a great room overlooking the Teton mountain range, and they have these two twin fireplaces on opposite sides of the room facing each other. And Pam and I, we love to sit there in front of a roaring fire, sipping a cup of tea and just talking, chatting, reading, reading God's word, just being thankful for God's love and his goodness, talking about the plans that God has for us. It's the perfect place to think deep, to reflect, to be reminded of all of God's blessings to hear him whisper. You know, how, you know how many times I've heard God whisper secrets to me just sitting by that warm, comforting fire. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful context. The fire gives light, warmth, energy. It, it produces an atmosphere, a sound that's constantly changing, a look that's creative. It's hypnotizing at times. It's even comforting, even distracting in a thoughtful way. The fire adds to the room's ambiance, just as long, just as long now as the fire is in its context. If you were to pull that fire out just a few feet out of its wonderful context and bring it a few feet into the hardwood floor on the carpet, you know, we would all probably go from, ah, fire to, ah, fire, right? C.S. Lewis said this, he said, is any pleasure on earth as great as a circle of Christian friends by a fire? You see, when we talk about fire, it's built right into the, built into the conversation context. We want fire in a beautiful context so that it produces life for us. That's what God has. God's the master of context. God is good all of the time. See, you have to know that His mercy and love and kindness endure forever. So fire is good when God's involved because He keeps it in the right context. If God is good, then His baptism of fire is good. He's looking for a vessel to put His fire that can manage and hold His fire. It's desirable. It's a gracious gift. Think of it. We need fire in some form or another to stay warm in the cold. The sun is a ball of fire that warms the earth and energizes photosynthesis and plant life. We use fire to cook food. We we use fire to make engines work by combustion. We make steel to build cities with fire, towers, tools, grass fires, and low-intensity wildfires, right? They, They may seem destructive, but they burn up the brush, the plant debris, and even help release the seeds out of certain pine cones. Fire increases mineralization, rates for the soil. Did you know that wood ash is even a great source of lime and potassium for your garden? Families love a good bonfire, a campfire, a hot dog roasting fire and a keep warm fire. People lost in the woods can die without the warmth, the protection, and the signaling ability of a fire. That all sounds profitable, even life-sustaining for you and me. This all brings to mind another text I've heard something being profitable for you. Jesus is talking, and here's what he said. Listen to this. John 16, verse 7. However, I'm telling you nothing but the truth when I say it is profitable, good, expedient, advantageous. Oh, I like that word. For you that I go away. He's telling his disciples it's advantageous for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the advocate, the intercessor, strengthener, standby will not come to you into close fellowship with you. But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. 
Oh, did you catch that? Jesus said that it's profitable for you. He said that if I go away, I will send the comforter to be in close fellowship with you. That's you and me being baptized by Jesus, the baptizer to the full and running over with the Holy Spirit and fire. Jesus said it's profitable for you. Profitable to us? How? Well, Holy Spirit... Holy Spirit will be profitable to us because he's, being, he's bringing the movement of the Spirit, the heat, so to speak. He will trigger our faith, our prayers, our praise, our worship. Holy Spirit will give us revelation, wisdom, understanding, energy, and fire. Hebrews 12, 29. Now, you probably are familiar with this, so let's bring it all together. Hebrews 12, 29, God says this, God is a consuming fire. But that fire of God, remember, is light love, and freedom. You see, God's Word, which is Jesus, is the fuel that produces the fire when ignited and a supply of air and heat. Frederick Douglass said this. He said, it's not light that we need. He said, it's fire. We need fire. So let's, let's break this down. Right? Let's get a little bit scientific. What is fire? Because you see, there's a secret about this that's Found about your life that's found only in the fire. There's a secret for you about your, your very identity that's found in the fire. And unless you're a fireman, a scientist, or unless you were really paying attention in Mrs. Baxter's chemistry class, most of us have not progressed much past what we knew about fire when we were just about six years old. Isn't that right? Flames, hot, don't touch, campfire, good, house fire, very bad. Fire is a complex chemical reaction called, listen to this, pyrolysis. Fire basically consists of a triangle. Air, which is, has oxygen in it, plus fuel, plus heat. It's a trinity. It's, it's not the trinity, obviously, but a form of a trinity. So think about this. The Holy Trinity is three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We know that God never, never changes. So let's come back to our verse, Hebrews 12, 29. God is a consuming fire. So let's see what we can understand better by looking at the formula for fire. Remember the formula for fire. Air plus fuel plus heat equals fire. So let's think about this. Air. What is air? Air is life. It's a mixture of gases. It's atmosphere, breath, environment. Fuel. It's the material, the substance, the matter, a source supply. Heat. It's the energy. You got to remember, heat is the movement of molecules. It's movement. It's a transfer of energy from one thing to another thing. It's kinetic energy. Air plus fuel plus heat equals fire. So how about this? The breath of life plus substance plus movement equals fire. So can I draw it again one more time? The spirit breath plus the word, which is the source of all substance, plus heat, the movement, that which precedes the movement of the Holy Spirit equals consuming fire. And consider this, you and I were made in the image of God. You're a triune being, body, soul, and spirit. We all have this desire to be, don't we? To light up, to be activated, to know glory, the glory that's above our own existence, that's from the outside in, to be empowered. Ephesians 5 verse 8 says this, For once you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. What did you think we receive? from breath of God, plus the manifest word of God, plus the movement, the heat of God. What do you think we're gonna get? Fire. He is glorious, majestic, light, energy, illumination, brilliance, intelligent fire. You see, too often people fall into the trap of weirdness and ritual regarding the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. So let's pursue some wisdom and understanding now, right? God's Word often uses natural things to explain supernatural things. Jesus did that. He was so good at it. Jesus was an expert at using metaphors and parables. In fact, he used metaphors and parables to explain the kingdom of God principles. He talked about things like weddings, right? He talked about lighting a lamp. He talked about wineskins, all natural things his audience was familiar with. So they began to connect the dots of the, of the visible to understand the invisible. 
the natural to better see a type and figure of the supernatural. And that's what we're going to do right now. So permit me to overlay a very natural trinity that produces fire with the trinity, the trinity that is fire. Okay, we're gonna do this little experiment. I'm excited and remember, air plus fuel plus heat equals fire. So how can I show you this? Well, I got this, here's my little tool. I'm gonna to put my glove on because I think this is gonna get hot. Put my little mitt on here. Now remember, air, invisible, God's invisible. Air, God, air is invisible. First John 4, 8, we said God is love. Well, nobody sees love. We see the outcome of love, but we don't actually, you can't walk into a room and see this purple haze. There's love. First John 4, verse 12 says, no one has seen God at any time. Only Jesus has seen the Father. Jesus, now on the other hand, so this is going to be my air. You see my supply of air around here? It's everywhere. Now, I need some fuel. Well, I, I picked some steel wool for fuel. Because you know what I love about steel wool is that it's this network, fine network of all these strands. You know, Jesus is the manifest word. The word became flesh, John 1.14 says. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory and the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But you see all this webbing here. When I think of Jesus being the manifest word, all these promises, look at all this fuel here. Word, the Word of God. You know, Hebrew, um, Hebrews 11 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I'm putting this in my little spatula here so I can manage my fuel. So remember, I got my air. I got all my fuel. But, you know, I want to think of it, this is kind of like you, isn't it? Until we put the, until we put the Word in you, You've got this vacuum, this God-shaped vacuum needing to be filled with the fuel of life because you're not lit up, not without Jesus in your life. And we put the promise, the manifest promise of God's word in your life. Look at that. We get Jesus in your life. But yet, some of you are still, you said, I've invited Jesus into my life, but I, I still don't really feel activated. Well, you've got every right to activation now. But Jesus, remember, is the baptizer of the Holy Spirit and fire. Remember, he told the disciples, it's profitable for you that I go away so that I can send the comforter. He will be your helper. He'll activate the promises that I've put inside of you. And so when we take this battery, you see, this represents movement. You can't see the movement, but there's a chemical reaction happening on the inside of this battery that makes molecules move. It makes electrons move. And so when I take this, let me get this in the right hand here, and I take this and I put like some movement to this, look at what happens. Look at, oh, we got the air around here. Oh my goodness, and did you know this was burning? I know this is hard to believe, but this is burning at like 700 degrees Celsius. And believe me, my face is telling me this is very hot. Look at that. And I'm just going to put this down right now because it is quite hot. <laughs> but look at this is you. You see, some of you, you received Jesus maybe years ago, and you've, you're holding the promises apart from the movement of the Holy Spirit. And you're like, well, I don't know if I want to, like, that sounds kind of charismatic, or that sounds something like, look, put all the denominational st stuff aside. This is about Jesus baptizing you with the Holy Spirit and fire. We were made for His fire. We were made to hold His fire. We really were. Fire brings comfort, strength, boldness, miracles, evidence, purification, protection. Can I bring you back to Hebrews 12 verse 29? God is a consuming fire. That word consume means to burn up. You know what? The gold of who you are, of who you are on the inside is not discovered until God's fire eliminates the brokenness, the sin and the deception of who you're not. That's good news. He's an expert at helping you and me be who we were destined to be. He doesn't consume you. He sent his son to die on a cross for you. The fire of God makes you, restores you, heals you, refines you, reveals the gold of who you are. God's fire. God delivers you from bondage and deceit with his fire. His true presence is hot, hot, hot. And things like deception, cancer, identity dysphoria, mental illness, death diagnosis, they're burned up. 
Doesn't that sound like a good consuming fire? Now you know why the devil has worked overtime to keep you religious or even just negative about God plus the Word of God plus Holy Spirit movement. It becomes your choice to welcome, to allow the fire of God. Not hell, but the light of heaven, the illumination that made all of creation supernatural energy, spiritual fusion. Who wakes up in the morning and says they don't like that burning ball of fire in the sky? People like the sun. The people get cheered when they see a sunny day. Oh, I know I've given you an armload of scripture, but just one more, one more to land this part one of theirs of fire. This so ignites and illuminates just who you are, the real you. And at the same time, it's eliminating the toxic fumes of fear, shame, and identity confusion. Listen to this. Romans 8, verses 14 and 15. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Oh, I can hear your heart saying, that's what I want. If the movement of God's spirit produces that kind of fire, the fire of true identity and being a child of God, I want it. I've got to have it. Well, my dear friend, it's your choice. It's always, always been your choice, but it begins with Jesus. He's the way to Abba. He's the way to Father God. And He is also the one who baptizes us with the movement, the heat of the Holy Spirit producing the fire of life, the activation of your child of God status. Why don't you just bow your heads right now? Pray this with me because this is your choice and only you have the authority to welcome the Godhead into your life. Pray this. Dear Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. You paid the price for me. You died on the cross. God raised you up from the grave. You have the power to baptize me, to fill me with the Holy Spirit, to start a fire in my life, producing light and life, burning up the pain and brokenness. Consume my confusion. Ignite your joy and peace and love in its place. I'm a child of God now. I am light in you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.